Hi YouTube. Today I want to talk about a couple different subjects that I have a feeling are fixing to be an issue in the firearm world. And before I get too deep into this, this may go a little long and I do apologize for that. Um, every weapon that you have here in front of you, I have safety checked. There's not one round of ammunition in any of them. All the magazines are empty. Everything is good to go. They've all been safety checked. And if you don't feel safe watching this video, feel free to turn it off. But I encourage you to listen to what I have to say. So what I want to talk about today is a thing that people often have a question about. And that is the... Um, the assault weapon ban that happened in 1994. President Bill Clinton signed into law after Congress passed it on September 13th, 1994, an assault weapon ban. And luckily for all of us firearm enthusiasts, the only way that this got passed through Congress was it had a sunset provision, which lasted 10 years. And on September 13th, 2004, it expired so anything that was in the ban was um, illegal during the ban after September 13 2004 all that went down the toilet now there's a couple things you need to know about this um, assault weapons ban was <clears throat> it had a grandfather clause in it so if you own something it was manufactured before September 13th of 1994 you already owned it and it did meet the criteria of a assault weapon and we'll go in a few minutes into what an assault weapon is or what they their definition of it is you were allowed to own it but no manufacturer could manufacture anything after september 13 1994 and sell it to the general public they can only sell it to the military law enforcement etc and there's so much to, to know about this thing and and I'm just going to tell you folks, there's been study after study after study and that assault weapons ban did nothing to reduce crime, reduce homicides, reduce idiots with the firearms or anything. It did absolutely nothing except for keep legal law-abiding citizens from owning some of the things that their hobbies are for. And it did a couple other things too that we'll go into here in a minute. So... We'll start off with the definition of an assault rifle or an assault weapon. Now, with the rifles, it was any rifle that contained two or more of the following. If it had, let me let me see if I can pick one of these up here. This is real hard to do this on camera, but I'm going to pick one of these rifles up and I'll show you. There's nothing in this rifle. It's not loaded. So if it had a telescoping stock, that's one of the things. If it had a pistol grip on it, a detachable magazine, a bayonet lug on it, or a flash hider or a threaded barrel allowing it to have a flash hider. That was the four major things that come to mind. If you had two or more of any of those on a rifle, it was considered an assault weapon. Now, in today's standards, any AR-15 that you buy, any stripped-down AR-15 is going to have at least two of those. They're going to have a pistol grip, and they're going to have a telescoping stock on it. So, unless you strip the detachable magazine out of it, take the um, stock off of it, and all the other stuff, you're going to have an assault rifle. And unfortunately... It made it impossible for any manufacturer to manufacture an assault or an AR-15 during the time of the assault weapons ban. Now, one of the things that blows my mind during this is, if you look at this, this rifle right here, this is the Ruger Mini-14. There's a couple exemptions in this assault um, weapons ban, and this was one of them. This Mini-14 was exempt from the assault rifle band. Now, it does not have a flash hider. It does not have a pistol. 
grip on it, but it does take testable magazines. And during the salt wiping span, you can only have a magazine that held 10 rounds or less, unless you already owned it. If you already owned it, they called it a pre band magazine. I don't know how they documented it. It's been so long, but you could own those. But they would not manufacture a rifle or pistol magazine that held over 10 rounds. So when you went to your local gun stores, you bought a Glock 19 or a Glock 17 or something like that, a common pistol. It came with a 10 round magazine. It's the only way you could buy it, brand new. You already owned one prior to that, it had the 17 and 15 round magazines in it. So, but the Ruger Mini 14, they only came with 10 round magazines. And that's because the wonderful Mr. Bill Ruger wrote a letter to Congress and says, I don't think you should just do an assault weapons ban. I think you should just do a magazine ban. And then he was a big closet case anti-gun person, if you, if you will, even though he owned the gun company. They never manufactured, Ruger themselves never manufactured a magazine with over 10 rounds as long as he was alive. And it's ridiculous. But during that time, the Ruger Mini 14 got a pass. It was actually written in the law that that was exempt. And that's because of Bill Ruger, because Bill Ruger was pretty much friends with the government. This Mini 14 here, this was made in 1985. That would have been illegal, except for that one was made before the the actual um, law went into effect. But in the in the law, the Mini 14 was fine unless it had a folding stock on it. A folding stock was not okay. Now, so in the law's eyes, this rifle is a lot more deadly -er than that rifle. Makes perfect sense. They're both Mini 14s. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense at all. So, pretty much every AR-15 was not legal. Now, during this time, people that already had an AR-15, they were called pre ban AR-15s. And if you wanted to buy one, you had to buy one of the ones that was already out there and have it transferred to you. It's very similar to like an NFA item, like a machine gun. They're no longer manufacturing machine guns um, after 1989 for the general public. So if you want one, you have to buy one that already exists. And there's limited numbers of them out there. And when there's limited numbers of something out there, people can ask whatever they want. So they can take a regular AR-15 that was manufactured in 1993, and people were getting thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, and people were buying them because they wanted one. You just can't go to the store and buy one. You have to buy one that was a pre van now, this one right here, this is a Colt um, AR-15. It's a government carbine, they call it. It's actually made for the law enforcement um, department. It was made during this ban. Um, and it wasn't made right before the ban, but it was made right after the ban. It's in the you know mid-90s, late-90s is when that one was manufactured. And it actually has a roll mark on the side of it. It says, Restricted Law Enforcement Military Use Only. And what that was is this was manufactured during the time, but the general public could not buy it. That was manufactured for a law enforcement agency, and they used them. And, it, and it's just crazy the way that they, the way that they did this law. Now, they set in certain things, certain um, standards, like a pistol. Like this would never fly right here because if a pistol weighs over 50 ounces unloaded, it it was an assault weapon. They named certain ones, they named the Polytex, they named the Tech 9, any replica of a fully auto um, machine gun that's even semi-automatic, those it counts, so all the auto ordnance, um, Tommy guns that you can buy right now the, with the drum magazines on them, couldn't have anything like that. It's just, I mean, you're very limited on what you what you could own. And there's a couple, there's a couple companies got a bunch of backlashes. Smith & Wesson said at one time they were going to refuse to um, sell their weapons inside of a store that had assault weapons inside of them. And, man, it just got real bad. I mean, very political, very unnecessary. 
they would not import any any AKs in the country. He couldn't. That was passed in 1989 by George Bush Sr. No AKs could be um, imported in. So you're you're just very limited. Whatever you had, you had, and and that was it. And you had to stay like that for 10 years. Now, one of the things it did was line a bunch of people's pockets. They had these rifles. They spent $500 on, and they were getting $5,000 for them. And people are going to be greedy. That's just the nature of the business. There's going to be greedy people, and people are not generally good for the most part. And when this sunset came up, when the sunset was up in 2004, all that went down the tubes. So anybody can manufacture an AR-15. You can do anything to it you want, and you can get stuff like this right here. This is a Springfield Saint, and it is identical in looks to this old Colt right here. This Colt that was manufactured during the ban that was illegal to own. It's just, and that Colt would have been, I don't know, three or four thousand dollars during that ban. And now you can just buy them all day long for next to nothing. Same way you can buy any AR-15. So all these people that try and sell you at these gun shows and everything, these pre banned guns, don't fall for it, folks. Go buy a regular Springfield Saint or PSA Armory AR-15. It has all that same stuff on it as this quote-unquote pre ban It's going to cost a third of what these gun dealers are trying to get these pre ban prices. If you want a Colt AR-15, go buy a Colt AR-15. You can get them for less than $1,000. You can buy a brand new one. It has all the same stuff on it. It's just as good a rifle. It says Colt on it and all that stuff. There's just no reason to do it. Now, one of the reasons I'm making this video is there was a big tragedy that just happened in Maine. And there was a guy, this lunatic, that just went and did another mass shooting. And I can already read the writing on the wall, folks. The president's going to come out and he's going to say how awful these weapons are and how nobody should own anything like this. Well, I own all these. And I've never thought about killing anybody. I've never decided to go do a mass shooting or anything like that. Well, where that happened was a very politically liberal state. And the gun laws are very restrictive there. And this guy managed to go to two different places. Two places. And pulled this rifle out and just started opening fire on people. Nobody tried to stop him. Nobody did. If that happens where there's a bunch of law-abiding citizens that have firearms on them, that would have been over with. It would have been it would have been over with and done because a law-abiding citizen that has proper training and knows what to do would have neutralized that threat immediately. If they could have. And I'm not saying that they're gonna be a marksman or whatever, but a law-abiding citizen has been properly trained and carries a firearm and doesn't go around telling everybody, I have a firearm on me just to be cool. They could have neutralized that threat. On well, states like Maine and Connecticut and Rhode Island and all those New York, New Jersey, it's very restrictive up there. And the majority of the people are not carrying firearms. And the ones that are carrying firearms are criminals. And they don't care about the laws, folks. This is going to be an issue. This is going to come up. Now, there's a bunch of organizations out there, and the NRA is one of the biggest ones, and I don't agree with everything about them, but you might want to think about joining the NRA. The NRA fights for your constitutional rights, and you have a constitutional right to own anything on this table. Everything you see here in front of you is 100% legal. Nothing here is illegal because I have the constitutional right to own it. And what the government's going to try and do they're going to try and take that constitutional right from you. And they did once, and it did no good. Now, my problem is, with some of these new ATF rules and stuff that they come out with, I have a big problem with that because there's been no legislation passed saying you can't have a pistol brace on your, um, your pistol, saying you can't have one of these bump stock things that they came out with or one of these forced reset triggers or some crazy stuff like this that they've come out with. I'm not really into all that stuff, but you should be able to have it and you cannot just make a rule up without legislation being passed. The reason I do not have a problem with that assault weapon ban that happened in 1994 is Congress actually passed it. It went through the House, it went through the Senate, 
It got passed by both of them, and it was signed off on by the president. End of story. It was a law. And it was it was a bad law, but it was a law. They went through the proper procedures. They made deals, and that's what they do. And they got it passed. There's been several attempts since that thing um, sunsetted in 2004 to bring it back, and it's never happened. So what happens now is we've had a mass, another mass shooting. I think the last counts I had, there's 20 dead people because of it, and bless their hearts. Um, my heart goes out to their family and everything, but... Now what's going to happen is all the gun people are going to come. They're going to get everybody riled up, and they're coming to take your guns. They're not coming to take your guns, folks. People are going to run to the ammo stores. They're going to clear out the shelves. Then they're going to go, and they're going to profit off of the stupid people that believe all the propaganda. Don't do it, folks. Don't, don't read into it. I've watched this cycle happen all the time. I've been in this game a long time. People are going to be selling 22 long rifle ammo for 50 cents a round because they bought every bit of it that was in Walmart. And um, they think there's going to, because they think they're going to ban ammo and ban rifles, and ban whatever. They're not going to ban anything, folks, unless it goes to Congress. They've been trying for 20 years to get this thing back, and they haven't been able to get it done yet because they saw it was a bad idea when it was, um, when it was in effect. The only reason that law ever passed, there was a bunch of deals made behind the scenes that not a lot of people know about, and they got it passed, and the only way they got it passed was that there was a sunset. It was sort of like a long experiment, and the experiment went bad for them because it did not work. Now, there's if they passed a law today banning these things outright, there are millions of these things out on the street, and I'm talking millions. And what that assault weapon did is scared the bejesus out of people. It, it made everybody go buy one. I mean, these things are cheap now. You can, you can buy them relatively cheap. Everybody went and bought one. There are millions of these things out. So if they pass a law saying anything on this table is illegal, everybody becomes a felon immediately. What well, do you think those criminals are going to care about that? They're still going to have them. I'm going to have to go get rid of all this stuff. If they said I had to get rid of it, I would have to do it if Congress if Congress actually passed the law saying this stuff was illegal. And I'm going to do that because I'm a law-abiding citizen. That's not what the criminals are. They don't care. They don't go past background checks or anything. They just go get them off the street and they do what they want to with them. And I'm telling you folks, don't buy into the propaganda. I want to make this video and make it clear you need to write your congressman. You need to vote. Vote the correct way of your beliefs. I'm not telling anybody what to vote. I'm not telling anybody who my political party is or anything like that. I don't discuss politics or anything. But if this is your thing, if firearms are your thing, you need to think about that the day that you vote. And think about, is this going to affect my lifestyle, voting for this person or this party or this group of people or whatever? You know, whatever the race is that's going on, you need to think about it. Because it's, it gets serious. When stuff like this happens, it's a tragedy. But one wing nut that goes in there and goes crazy with a rifle doesn't mean all the law-abiding citizens that have these weapons here, these quote-unquote assault rifles, are bad people. They're not bad people. You need people to have stuff like that to neutralize threats like that happened in Maine. And that guy was a lunatic. And, I mean, there's other ones like him out there. This is, he wasn't the first one. He's not going to be the last one. But hopefully people properly arm themselves and they have the proper training and they can neutralize threats like that. It's not, it's not a game, folks. It's not something you don't own stuff like this just to say you're cool. If you have stuff like this for protection, you need to learn how to use it because... You never know when it's going to happen. All those people were just sitting in a bowling alley or sitting at a restaurant, and this lunatic comes in there and starts killing people. And they had a properly trained person, a regular John Q. Public, that had a firearm on him and was properly trained and everything was legal. He could have neutralized that threat immediately. I'm not saying the guy wouldn't have killed people. I'm not saying that that guy wouldn't have, the, the John Q. Public guy wouldn't have died trying, but you have to try. You can't let stuff like that happen.
But anyway, folks, I wanted to do this video. Um, this wasn't too much about going into each individual gun. I'll, be, I'll go through real quick. You have a regular Springfield Saint. You have a Mini-14. You have a Folding Mini-14. You have a Colt AR-15. You have a Wilson Combat AR pistol. You have a Springfield pretty decked out um, AR-15. And you have an AK-47. That's what I have here on the table in front of you. And... Every one of them are evil if you ask the government or if you ask certain groups of people. They're not evil folks because I'm not an evil person. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, or anything, let me know. I'll be happy to answer the questions for you. Or I'll be happy to comment on your comment. But anyway, folks, thank you very much for watching this video. And you folks have a great day.